Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Melson. I'm the program manager of Transit, which is uh, Region 6's University Transportation Center, or ETC. Thank you all for attending. This is the first webinar of our joint transit webinar series, uh, which will feature novel concrete materials to enhance the durability of transportation infrastructure. The webinar is also jointly hosted by, by Transit, but also by the UTC for Underground Transportation Infrastructure, which is a Tier 1 UTC led by the Colorado Pool of Mines. And we ask that if you are interested in our research and want to learn more about both of our research centers, please visit our websites or you can contact us directly. We would love to engage with you and your agency or otherwise coordinate our research to, be the, to have the greatest impact or benefit um, as possible. So today we'll have three 20-minute presentations. And we'll save the questions until the end of all three presentations and have a quick 15-minute uh, Q&A. And so the questions will come from this Q&A box. For, for me, it's at the top, um, where you can type in your questions in this box. And at the end of the three presentations, we'll go through those uh, questions and answer as many as we can. Also, you can receive a professional development hour for this session. And I think I typed in more information about how you do that in, in the chat box. So anyway, uh, without further ado, again, I apologize for the delay. I'll introduce our first speaker, uh, Dr. Homero Castaneda. And also, Homero, if you want to set up sharing your screen um, while I introduce you, please, please um, uh, go ahead. So Dr. Castaneda is an associate professor in the material science and engineering department at Texas A&M University. Prior to joining Texas A&M University, Dr. Castaneda was an assistant professor at the University of Akron, a principal research scientist at Battelle Memorial Institute, project leader at the Mexican Petroleum Institute, and electrical chemical scientist at Siemens Technology Center at Lowell, Massachusetts. His expertise is in the areas of electrochemistry, materials and corrosion, targeting environmental effects on metallic chemical degradation, interfacial mechanisms on electrochemical systems. So, Dr. Castaneda, if you'd like to start with your presentation and share your screen. Okay, thanks for the introduction, Chris. I'm going to start to uh, uh, thank everyone uh, for the attendance. And uh, we're going to talk about the characterizing and understanding self healing microcapsules embedded in reinforced concrete structures exposed to corrosive environment. These are the authors. And of course, uh, we would like to thank the Transcend um, uh, uh, Opportunity. To, uh, to have uh, this uh, webinar. So the background, I, I'm gonna describe a little bit what it means uh, corrosion in reinforced structures. You see a diagram uh, uh, that illustrates uh, how the river embedded in the concrete is gonna uh, corrode with time. You see the time in the X axis, cumulative damage in the Y axis. Do you, we call it uh, in corrosion three stages of, uh, of damage in the uh, reinforced uh, uh, structures. The river, when you expose it, there is a stage one that uh, all the uh, precursors of corrosion, all the environment penetrates. And there is a time when you start to activate that uh, uh, river because the precursors go and, uh, and uh, uh, penetrate the passive layer that is formed naturally due to the alkaline uh, environment and penetrates and starts to crack and uh, uh, starts to uh, uh, induce damage. And stage two, we call it the transition. The transition time where we uh, said that there is a, 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 an implication of these corrosion precursors in the river. And stage three, we call it the uh, propagation. The propagation is where you see that these uh, in red color, the, 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 uh, the corrosion products, how once you activate in stage two, the activation will induce these corrosion products and will just increase the volume of, uh, of uh, this uh, uh, original uh, uh, size, and then it's gonna start to form the cracks. So uh, these uh, three stages are the damage evolution in terms of corrosion, for the river in concrete. So also a little bit of background, how can we just avoid this uh, 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 process? Well, once you set up the, uh, the river in the concrete, we cannot uh, 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 get rid of stage one because that's the initiation time. So 
What we can do, for example, is in stage one, uh, uh, we can put cathodic protection, which means that we can protect the cathode, uh, in this case, the river. We can uh, put, uh, we call it sacrificial anodes or something uh, that we can uh, protect the river by sacrificing the, the, the uh, another material. So we can put either zinc or uh, some other material that is more active than the, than the river that we have. The other option that we have is the electrochemical chloride extraction, which is very costly because we need energy to uh, take out the corrosion precursors, which is the chloride, for example, in the concrete. But the third uh, thing that we can do is to add something in the concrete to uh, uh, enlarge or to increment this stage one, which again, we're not gonna get, get rid of because we are forming a, a, a river and a concrete and we, co we form an electrochemical cell. So we cannot get rid of this, but what we can do is to, again, extend the life of each one of the stages, in this case, the stage one. Therefore, a solution that we are in, uh, assuming or we are proposing in this, uh, in this topic is the inhibition mechanism in the, in the concrete. The concrete, the inhibition mechanism is by microcapsules. Well, the microcapsules uh, are embedded in the concrete uh, as, an, um, as an admixture, uh, as, a, as an additive, sorry. And uh, so um, these microcapsules have been the most widely utilized delivery method for self-healing concept. Why? Because it's versatile and because the variety of applicable healing agents that we have, we can put many chemicals. And then these chemicals, according to the concrete and the environment, can be used for the self-healing effect. So the inhibition is a, a process that we capture the uh, corrosion precursors uh, in this stage one to avoid to go pass to the stage two. So in this case, what we are, uh, what we are gonna talk about is the calcium nitrates, microcapsules, that uh, uh, how the uh, microcapsules of calcium nitrates are gonna, uh, are gonna work. Well, this is the, basically the, the inhibition mechanism. You see the microcapsules here in the, in the, in the, uh, the pictures. You see the microcapsules once you have the, these microcapsules. When you have a crack in the, in the concrete, you see the crack on the top, and then the crack, it starts to propagate. When the crack, you have a, a, a full exposure of the environment with the, with the microcapsules and how the microcapsules can release these chemicals, that these chemicals uh, either precipitate or uh, uh, act chemically, to these corrosion precursors, again, to extend the stage one and to make it as, uh, last uh, longer. So based on this concept and based on this uh, uh, background, so the objectives are to study the performance of the microcapsules based on the inhibitors that we select, Evaluate the influence of this concentration of the microcapsules in the concrete by using corrosion testing and by using accelerating testing. And I will explain why accelerating. And to see the performance of these uh, uh, microcapsules in this uh, concrete. Well, the materials and methods, the microcapsule preparation, which we believe uh, that is a very uh, 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 simple process. So it's based on uh, a suspension. And the polymerization reaction uh, forms these uh, uh, microcapsules, and uh, they form and then uh, uh, are formed in the in the in the concrete. So, based on this uh, uh, on this uh, uh, mechanism and this synthesis, what we do is the microcapsules embedded. Uh, uh, we just change the concentration uh, to see what is the most optimal concentration based on our hypothesis that we are going to extend the stage one uh, 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 period, so to mitigate corrosion. So what we start to do is to uh, have different concentration of calcium nitrate. And uh, uh, based on this, we just test each one of the microcapsules based on this concentration. And also what we did is to see that the concrete, what was the uh, properties of the concrete based on the addition of these microcapsules. So we did the compre from compressive strength and the surface resistivity test based on this standard as, uh, as you are seeing, the ASTM or ASTO standards. And uh, the corrosion characterization 
once we form the uh, concrete uh, samples, the uh, reinforced concrete, we put these uh, concrete uh, beans and uh, we did a configuration in a way to test corrosion based on electrochemical methods. And you see the containers here on the right uh, bottom uh, uh, part of the, uh, of the transparency. You see the containers we put a uh, solution, uh, this salt 3.5% solution, we put it there and then in the container to uh, induce the, the, uh, the corrosive environment into the, into the uh, specimens. So based on this uh, setup, uh, we and the different concentration of the microcapsules, we did a, a different uh, electrochemical testing, which uh, for corrosion is very classical. We call it open circuit, which I will describe, and electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, which is a non-destructive evaluation technique that uh, is going to be very useful for our uh, characterization of the microcapsules. And the, the corrosion characterization was, again, uh, based on the electrochemical system. We set up a, a, a system in a way that uh, to send a, a signal, an AC signal is a non-destructive evaluation, and to see what is the response of each one of the concentrations of the microcapsules. So we have uh, this configuration which the working electrode in the electrochemical system is the, uh, is the river. The reference electrode we use as a, 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 a saturated calumet electrode, and we use a platinum mesh for the counter electrode. We need a three electrode system. So the corrosion characterization, uh, uh, we also uh, did the uh, polarization resistance. And this is very important. Uh, most of the time in corrosion, corro uh, uh, amazingly, uh, it uh, takes uh, several days to start to see corrosion in, uh, in, co in concrete. So what we did is an accelerating testing, which means that we reduce the time of uh, the characterization. So what we did is the wet dry cycles. Why we do this is because we uh, change the oxygen concentration in the, in the environment to induce corrosion. So in this way, we accelerate and we take less time to see what is the effect of the microcapsules in this stage one. So, the, again, the corrosion testing was with this uh, 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 solution, which is very, very corrosive, and also, again, the uh, accelerating testing. So the results uh, can be uh, 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 illustrated here. So uh, the concrete testing in terms of, uh, uh, of physical properties of the concrete is an, uh, uh, an, in an increase in the microcapsule concentration has a negative impact on strength. That's uh, something to consider in terms of the uh, uh, concrete properties. And the highest microcapsule concentration resulting at 18 uh, uh, per, uh, percent uh, uh, strength reduction. Okay, that's again very important to, to co uh, consider the resistivity. So uh, we, uh, uh, with the addition of microcapsules, uh, drop the correct permeation level from low to moderate. And uh, this is the comp compressive strain uh, 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 numbers based on the uh, on the different concentration of microcapsules. So again, something to consider in terms of physical properties and also the uh, the resistivity of uh, the concrete based on the uh, on different concentration of uh, microcapsules. So uh, this is very important. Uh, this is the corrosion uh, testing. So for the corrosion people, I think this is uh, very uh, important to have two kinds of. Uh, 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 testing. One is the old open circuit potential, which in civil engineering I think is very common. And uh, uh, you put different levels, low, intermediate, or high corrosion. So based on this, you can see that the control is better than the uh, microcapsules in terms of OCP, in terms of open circuit potential. This is not a, a corrosion uh, 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 point of view. Uh, uh, this is just a thermodynamic point of view. This is the likelihood of corrosion. So uh, that doesn't mean that it's corroded or not. So it's the likelihood of corrosion. So this is a thermodynamic approach that is civil engineering is very well used. But in corrosion engineering, what we use is the, not only the OCP that you see, that uh, for example, uh, you see that 0.25% uh, that, uh, is a real corrosion once you uh, start to increase the, the, the uh, percentage. So you see uh, low corrosion based on the wet-dry cycle. 
But also what you have to consider, and this is very important, is the corrosion rate. The other one is the thermodynamic point of view. This is the corrosion rate. So you see control, the control is, uh, has a certain uh, con uh, uh, corrosion rate, but uh, based on the 2% of, uh, of the microcapsules, we drop, uh, we drop the, uh, uh, the corrosion rate and uh, it's uh, almost a, a very low, uh, it's a very low level and uh, 0.5 also uh, is uh, uh, better than the control. So it's very important not only to see the thermodynamic approach, but also the, uh, the, uh, the kinetic approach. You see that the control now starts to increase the corrosion based on the time. Why? Because we pass from stage one to stage three. But you see that uh, in terms of adding the microcapsules, we see the uh, different concentrations, how the corrosion rate is decreasing. So this is very important, again, because you see that uh, based on different concentration, the higher the concentration, the better the corrosion rate it is for these uh, structures of these samples. So based on this, and uh, uh, as a very quick conclusion, based on the results that we got uh, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, set of results, uh, the concentration microcapsules added had a significant effect on, the, of course, the uh, physical conditions of the concrete, the physical properties, also the resistivity, but uh, at the, in terms of corrosion, we also have a very nice effect in terms of uh, adding the concentration of the, uh, of the microcapsules. We can determine by, uh, um, by kinetics that based on the fact that we add these uh, 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 microcapsules, we are uh, decreasing uh, the corrosion rate and, uh, uh, and based on accelerating testing. So this is a good uh, way to say that uh, we, are, uh, we, uh, we are proving the hypothesis that uh, in terms of corrosion, we add, uh, when we add the uh, microcapsules, we are decreasing the corrosion rate on the rebar, which means that we are delaying the time of activation of propagation. Ah, but uh, in this conclusion, we have to balance the uh, physical properties with the chemical properties. So we are on the stage to balance uh, physical versus corrosion uh, properties. So uh, by saying this, uh, what we are gonna do is uh, the new testing. We will just uh, do different concentrations also. And also we are gonna ask, uh, test different chemicals uh, uh, in the, in the, uh, for the microcapsules. And uh, we also have a new testing going. So uh, we, uh, we are uh, uh, very good now in terms, of, uh, in terms of one month, we can tell uh, one or two months. In the standards, we have one year and a half of, uh, uh, of corrosion testing to see if uh, an additive is good or bad. But I think that we, now we can say that in two months, we can tell uh, if a microcapsule or anything added to the concrete uh, uh, is good or bad in terms of corrosion. So we also, uh, we want to make this as a conclusion that the testing well, that we are doing is getting uh, uh, good results. So based on this and based on the time that I have, I just wanna finalize uh, saying thank you and uh, thanks to uh, Transit uh, uh, sponsor and also my collaborators that you saw at the very beginning. And uh, we will be open to questions, I don't know now or at the very end. So that, that will be pretty much for me. Great, thank you, Dr. Kassana. Uh, and also, again, especially for people that have joined, uh, we're gonna try to do the Q&A with questions from the uh, Q&A box in the, in the WebEx room. For me, it's on the bottom. I don't see any questions yet, but again, please type them in at the end of all the presentations. We'll go through the, the Q&A. So again, thank you, Dr. Kassana. As you mentioned, this, this was a transcent-sponsored uh, project. Uh, for our second project, it's a, a project sponsored by the UTC for Underground Transportation Infrastructure. And I'll introduce our next speaker, Dr. Mehran uh, Mazari. Again, uh, Dr. Mazari, if you'd like to share your screen now, um, please, please go ahead as I introduce you. Uh, Dr. Mazari is an assistant professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at California State University, specializing in transportation infrastructure and materials. His research interests include sustainable and resilient transportation infrastructure materials and non-destructive evaluation of transportation infrastructure. 
He is a member of three technical uh, committees of the Transportation Research Board and a member of the Highway Pavement Committee and Sustainability Committee of ASCE's Transportation and Development Institute. He's the founding director of Sustainable, Sustainable and Intelligent Transportation Infrastructure a Research Lab at California State University at Los Angeles. So please go ahead. Thank you very much, Dr. Mazzari. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the introduction and uh, good morning from the West Coast. Um, today, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, use of recycled and sustainable materials in self-compacting or self-consolidating concrete for um, underground transportation infrastructure applications. As Chris mentioned, uh, this project was sponsored by University Transportation Center for Underground Transportation Infrastructures, UTC, UTI, which uh, uh, is the lead institution is Colorado School of Mines in collaboration with Lehigh University and us, Cal State LA. Uh, before I go ahead with the presentation, I would like to um, thank you, the UTC UTI director, Mari, uh, Dr. Gut Gutierrez uh, from uh, Colorado School of Mines. Um, our project st staff is myself and Tony Rodriguez is the co-PI. And I would also like to thank you, our research assistants, um, Hector, Jason, Francisco, and Daniel, uh, helping us with this project. Um, so I would like, this is a, 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 a brief uh, outline of uh, what we are going to cover in this presentation. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, give out a, a, a quick introduction of the uh, self-compacting concrete and then followed by uh, our research methodology on, on, on uh, our project scope. As uh, probably uh, uh, most of you already know that uh, self-compacting concrete or self-consolidating concrete is a type of concrete that can flow um, and consolidate under its own weight. And that's a big difference between the SCC and the conventional uh, vibratory concrete or CVC, which, uh, uh, which means that the SCC does not require any uh, extra vibration for consolidation. It is highly workable and it can easily um, get around the, the rebars and reinforcement and also uh, it can uh, give you a, a smooth finish based on the type of the formwork that you're using. Um, it was first uh, introduced in the mid 80s in Japan and then uh, recently, uh, there are a couple of research projects. There were two NCHRP National Highway Cooperative Research Program uh, that was focused on the application of SCC in bridge elements, which shows that it's it's getting uh, uh, more popular um, uh, recently. So um, the basic property of the SCC and its difference between the regular mix is that uh, uh, it's, it's basically a combination of adding more fines and also adding a, 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 some sort of admixtures to enhance the either viscosity of the mix or um, increasing its workability and flowability. These, these admixture could include uh, the viscosity modifying admixture or VMA, could be a high range water re reducer which uh, let you uh, reduce your uh, water to cement ratio and uh, you know that it, it, decreasing water to cement ratio could give you a higher compressive strength and higher performance of the uh, final product. Um, and also super plasticizer, can, they can really increase the workability and flowability of the uh, SCC mix. Um, again, as you can see on the Bottom right uh, photo, uh, the, 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 the finished surface of the SCC is a very uh, smooth surface compared to um, conventional concrete, specifically uh, in this case for precast tunnel segments. Um, a quick uh, overview of the literature about the um, SCC. Um, again, water to cement ratio is uh, a little bit uh, less um, compared to 
the conventional concrete. Um, for the most part, during the literature, it is around 0.4 or 0.5. Um, in terms of 28-day compressive strengths, most of the literature uh, studies reported uh, uh, a compressive strength, 28 compre 28 day compressive strength of 40 megapascal. And uh, there's a um, significant um, increase in the slump flow and slump spread of the SCC compared to the conventional uh, vibratory concrete. So um, right now we are in the phase two of this project and uh, what we are doing, we are testing a series of fresh uh, concrete properties um, as well as evaluating some early age properties and, and of course hardened properties that could include the uh, compressive or tensile strengths, modular elasticity, and also investigating the drying and plastic shrinkage. Um, the goal is to see what is the impact of a sustainable material, non cementitious materials such as fly ash or slag, and uh, um, for most part using or investigating the impact of recycled fibers on the performance or how they can enhance the performance of the SCC. Uh, these are some of the fiber types that we are using in this project. There are some more coming in. Um, uh, mostly so far we have been using two uh, uh, manufactured macrofibers, one type of synthetic uh, microfibers and also um, two types of recycled tire fibers. These are coming uh, out of a, a tire recycling uh, plant and we are trying to see how we can integrate those in the SCC mixes and how they can enhance the um, properties of the final product. Um, in terms of laboratory evaluations, the fresh properties of the SCC, except for the regular slump test, there are some other specific tests that was designed and developed by ASTM and ASHTO to evaluate the properties of the SCC. Um, the filling ability is uh, evaluated through the, the regular slump tests and, and sometimes they do an inverted cone slump test for SCC. Passing ability could be done through a J-ring test as you can see on the top right here that it basically simulates the um, reinforcement uh, inside the formwork and see how the SCC mix can uh, flow through the reinforcement. Um, segregation is very important in SCC and we don't want to have uh, or to see bleeding or segregation in our mix. Uh, that's why we do the static column segregation or the static penetration test. Um, and also uh, we are evaluating the air content of fresh concrete SCC mix um, uh, under different criteria and using different materials. Um, for hardened properties, we are basically using the, the four uh, basic um, uh, hardened properties, including the compressive strengths, split tensile strengths, modulus of elasticity, and also, uh, also flexor or beam strengths. Um, this, the, this last one is specifically designed for fiber reinforced um, concrete mixes and we are going to see how the fibers, specifically recycled fibers, can enhance the properties of the mix. Uh, this is one example of the passing ability results by J-Ring and you can see how different mixes could pass through the reinforcement of the J-Ring test and uh, um, the by measuring the slump flow, uh, I mean the slump spread and the central height of the um, spread after uh, the spread is done, we can evaluate the passing ability and workability of the SCC mixes. Um, so what we are doing, we have a base SCC mix without any um, type of fibers and then we compare 
um, the flowability or the passing ability uh, by the other mixes that contain different types of fiber at different dosage um, by volume of the concrete. Again, these are pre um, still preliminary results and uh, will include uh, um, more um, comprehensive results later on. Um, another test was to evaluate the static penetration and see if our mix is uh, segregating. And uh, you're basically dropping a needle on top of the uh, slump cone as you have the SCC mix inside the slump cone and evaluate the height to see at, uh, basically three levels of resistance to static segregation in terms of the, the, the mix that could be resistant, moderately resistant or not resistant, which in this case, most of them are resistant or moderately resistant to static segregation. Uh, this was uh, 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 an example of uh, uh, an excessive segregation or excessive bleeding in this case, and uh, uh, a desirable SCC or stable SCC mix that uh, you probably don't see any type of or any uh, uh, signs of segregation or bleeding at the uh, on the edges of the slump strut. Uh, spread and this is basically quantified by the visual stability index or VSI. Um, another big thing uh, specifically in the application of the SCC for um, precast tunnel segments is the curing process for the uh, tunnel segments and how the temperature gradient or the temperature difference between the curing process and the storage process could affect the performance of the um, uh, tunnels, precast tunnel segments. So uh, to do that, we are trying to um, monitor the uh, maturity uh, of the um, concrete samples or SCC samples by monitoring the internal temperature over time and see if we can correlate the maturity index to the compressive strengths. Uh, this is um, having a, a huge potential on the production of the um, tunnel segment, uh, precast tunnel segments, because uh, if we know or if we can um, predict the real-time strengths uh, by monitoring the maturity, uh, we can adjust and control the, uh, the curing heat and uh, saves a lot of uh, time and energy and, uh, of course, money for the um, production process. Some uh, other preliminary results of the 28-day uh, compressive strengths, and uh, uh, we can see that the, the adding the steel fiber is clearly uh, increasing and enhancing the compressive strengths of the um, cylindrical samples in the lab. Um, Uh, one other thing that we've been working on uh, is that uh, we're trying to extract the um, strain or deflection properties of the cylindrical samples under compressive strengths uh, using uh, uh, image analysis techniques and see um, if we can um, correlate the um, the compressive load and the deformation and find the uh, load versus deformation or stress deformation uh, curves by just uh, uh, recording the, um, the test and then uh, using some image analysis techniques to evaluate the uh, X and Y uh, displacements of the sample. Um, Another part of the, this project that we are going to do down the line is to use a lattice district particle model to uh, evaluate the, the um, properties of uh, uh, fiber reinforced SCC and see how different dosage of fibers or different types of fiber configurations can impact the uh, properties of the uh, final mix in terms of um, resistance to um, deflection or resist or uh, durability or 
under uh, compressive strengths uh, or uh, any other flexural um, properties. And uh, um, I try to save some time here and uh, so that our next presenter presentation have uh, enough time before we uh, before 11 and uh, in summary uh, we are still the work is in progress in phase two uh, we are trying different types of recycled fibers and also non cementitious materials to see what is the impact of these kind of uh, sustainable materials on the fresh properties and hardened properties of uh, the concrete samples in the lab and see how we can apply these findings uh, more specifically in production of uh, precast tunnel segments. And uh, just to um, emphasize the importance of uh, or the uh, widespread use of SCC, ACI recently launched uh, a new certification or technician certification program which is specifically focused on um, uh, tests for SCC. Uh, which shows that uh, this type of concrete is getting more uh, popularity uh, recently. Um, that's uh, pretty much all my presentation uh, that I had today. And uh, I believe we can uh, save some questions for the end of this session. Um, thanks, Chris. Uh, back to you. Perfect. Yeah, thank you very much. And again, um, feel free to type in any of your questions in the, in the Q and A uh, box. Again, we'll look at them at the at the end of the last presentation. Uh, also, if there's no uh, Q and A, we can maybe also unmute some people if they have their uh, questions directly. But to get to our last speaker, Dr. Chilik Durham is a principal research scientist with the Virginia Transportation Research Council. A division of Virginia, which is a division of the Virginia Department of Transportation. His research areas are concrete materials, including ingredients, properties, testing and specifications, and concrete reinforcement. He received his PhD in civil engineering from the University of Virginia. He's an active, uh, he's active in the American Concrete Institute, the American Society of Testing and Materials, and the Transportation Research Board. He is a, also a fellow of the AC, ACI, excuse me. He is a past chairman of the TRB section on concrete and a member emeritus of the TRB committee of basic research and emerging technologies related to concrete. He was also an instructor in civil engineering at the University of Virginia. So thank you very much. Um, and yeah, please, please start your presentation. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. And I'd like to talk about, uh, I'm from the uh, research division of the Virginia Department of Transportation. And I like to talk about this engineered cementitious composite, the ECC, which is a fiber reinforced concrete, and how uh, what we do in Virginia, uh, how uh, do we apply this uh, concrete uh, to our structures? Uh, today, I will uh, make a brief introduction of ECC, and then talk about three V dot applications: the shear keys, closure pores, and culvert repairs. Uh, ECC is a mortar mixture with PVA, polyvinyl alcohol fibers, and it is a fiber reinforced concrete. The reason we use it is to control cracks in, uh, in our concretes. And ECC was developed by Dr. Victor Lee from the University of Michigan. A typical ECC mixture here in pounds per cubic yard. It has high amounts of Portland cement, class F fly ash, water and then the initial uh, uh, mixes had uh, mortar sand but because of availability in Virginia we are using concrete sand as well and then we use fibers uh, when Dr. Lee uh, developed this he used two percent fibers by volume which is about 44 pounds per cubic yard but when you buy a bag of uh, fibers it comes in 40 pound bags so it turns out to be 1.8%. And that's why I put both of these numbers here, 1.8% to 2%. So a bag of fiber, PVA fiber, is 40 pounds. And the maximum water cementitious ratio is 0 
So it's a pretty low water cement ratio. And as you see in this mixture uh, uh, proportions, a very rich mix and uh, such uh, rich mixes are prone to shrinkage. And I'll show you some shrinkage values later. It contains high range water reducing admixture uh, to make it workable. In fact, it's a self-consolidating concrete. And then other admixtures are also used, such as workability retaining, shrinkage reducing, retarding, accelerating, viscosity and modifying admixtures can also be added. Here is a good example of uh, ECC, a small uh, uh, beam uh, here, uh, ECC beam. As you know, when you look at the uh, uh, web, you will find that ECC is also called bendable concrete. And as you see here, and this is from our lab, uh, this piece is really very flexible. This beam is very flexible and has gone so much deflection. And you have very small cracks, many multiple cracks, but no large crack. So this is a bendable concrete, and we like to use this so that we can keep the cracks very tight, less than 0.1 millimeters, and chloride solutions cannot penetrate through those very tight cracks in our structures. Here uh, is a, a result of a flexure test. Uh, ECC with 2% here, uh, the original, one of the original graphs we have done with 44 pounds per cubic yard. And uh, PVA uh, fibers were used in this. And uh, one interesting thing, as you look at this load versus deflection curve from the uh, 1609 ASTM C1609 test, it shows that after the first crack, the material gets stronger with more deflection. And the reason is, the fibers start acting, helping you. So this phenomenon is known as uh, deflection hardening. It is stronger after the first crack. So since it's strong at that location when it has a crack, it doesn't get wider. Another crack forms next to it, so you, get, you end up with multiple cracks in this concrete. As we discussed this curve, the load versus deflection curve and how it got stronger. And now same uh, same beam I was showing you. On the left-hand side is the deflection from the side. You can see the deflected shape. And now on the right-hand side, you see the bottom of this beam at the bottom. Many very tight cracks. And these are less than 0.1 millimeter in thickness. Now, we use them in shear keys. Here you see a voided slab, a beam, and then next to it is another one. And here you see the shear key between them, right here, the shear key. It is a very small uh, cross section. If you look at the top, it is only one and one quarter inches in width, very small and three to four inches in depth. So this is a very small section. And uh, here, they normally uh, use to uh, uh, put uh, place uh, grout, but uh, they had problems with cracking and uh, chlorides penetrating through these uh, shear keys and causing corrosion at the bottom of these beams. Uh, so, uh, uh, so what uh, we suggested is to use the uh, fiber reinforced concrete, the ECC. So I'll tell you a little bit about that here. The shear keys basically transfer, transfer the load between beams and seal the joints. Our first application was in 2013 in this bridge. Uh, since these are very small amounts in cubic feet, we used a mortar mixer. Uh, we bashed up the material, went up to the side, and used this mortar mixer to place the ECC. As you see, the way the ECC is prepared, you make a very highly workable uh, mortar, and then you add the fibers into this mortar. And at the end, you end up with the uh, self-consolidating concrete. This is now the mortar uh, mixture with the fibers in it. And the slump usually uh, ranges from 18 to 21 inches. So this is what we use in shear keys. In that bridge that I showed you, we use the uh, basic grout mixture that they have been using. And then we also placed ECC, as you see here. And then we also placed UHPC. 
this UHPC mix was uh, 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 not setting um, uh, on time. It took us almost a day for it to set, and it was flowing. And as you look carefully, you will see that we put wooden planks uh, to keep it in place because these uh, bridges have a grade to them. I think about maybe 3% grade. And the uh, UHPC was uh, uh, not setting on time and was flowing down. So uh, I understand that now they have other versions of UHPC and some of them sets within uh, hours. Uh, and I hope that they won't have this problem anymore. But uh, we were uh, very happy with the ECC. Uh, as you see here, uh, we made a trough and we put the trough on the shear key opening here, a very uh, narrow opening. And then uh, as you see, it is self-consolidating, flowing very easily. And then it did uh, hold the shape. Uh, so it went very well. This was in 2013. And now uh, we asked them to leave it open, nothing on the, as an overlay on these uh, box beams, uh, voided slabs or box beams. And, and they said they will leave it uh, open for three months. And at the end of three months, ECC was the only one that did not leak. You see, they, the others had small leaks at the bottom. And as you know, the leaks were the problems. So in Virginia, we uh, did this uh, experiment and we're happy with the uh, performance of the ECC. And then we went to another bridge the following year, 2014, as you see here. Uh, we put ECC on all these shear keys. You see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six shear keys. We put ECC and on site in this mortar mixer, uh, as you see, they had bashed up dry materials, mixed it in this mortar mixer, and then again used the trough I had and placed it in buckets, uh, poured it into this uh, uh, shear keys. And then they are finishing it. There is no consolidation, easy placement. And then they put this burlap uh, to cure it, uh, wet burlap on top of it. So that went very well too. So now we have a special provision in Virginia that we are using uh, the uh, shear keys, uh, ECC and shear keys. Another example is uh, how we can use ECC in this closure pores, link slabs. We are eliminating the joints. These are beams here, eliminating the joints and placing these closure pores, or some people call link slabs. Here is the bridge. This is an interstate on an interstate bridge uh, in the western part of Virginia. And as you see, there are uh, these uh, joints uh, there, and we put this uh, material. Uh, the dimensions, I gave the dimensions. Um, we did one lane at a time, so traffic could flow on the other lane. And as you see here at the bottom, the joint. So we remove this joint and uh, make this uh, uh, here area, and then place the reinforcement there for continuity and then uh, we place the ECC. And in these examples, uh, as you remember, in the shear keys, we were talking about cubic feet, uh, little amounts, less than cubic yard. But in these uh, closure pores, uh, we were using in yards, cubic yards of material. Uh, we were doing two at a time and uh, cubic yards of material. So we used Redimix concrete trucks. And fibers, as you see somebody here, uh, adding fibers. Here's a bag of fibers. As I told you, this bag uh, has uh, 40 pounds of fibers, and we use one bag per cubic yard. And here, you can again see it is a self-consolidating material. You don't need to vibrate it. Uh, you can if you want, but you don't need to, and uh, it went very well. Now, I'd like to show you the shrinkage values from that uh, uh, closure pour. Uh, we did the shrinkage um, the testing, uh, drying shrinkage, ASDM C157. And as you see here, length change in percent, 2,000 micro strain, 2,000 micro strain. Here it's uh, 1,600 micro strain. These are very high numbers, like about three times what you would expect. A, regular bridge deck concrete, very high numbers. But because of the fibers in the system, uh, if it cracks, the cracks are very tight. And uh, those cracks uh, do not permit the, the solutions to penetrate into the concrete. 
And as you see, we did a crack survey. This is uh, after three years. Uh, this was done in 2014, so 2017 we went. And you will see that to see those cracks, this is a closure pour completed. To see these cracks, you have to be on your knees. And you see here, we are looking with the comparators, very tight cracks. It's hard to see. That's why we drew, drew a, a, red, a red line there. Very, very tight cracks. Now, the last um, example of ECC in Virginia is the culvert repair. These corrugated metal pipes, metal culverts, are made of galvanized steel, and they are subject to abrasion and corrosion, mainly in the inverse, at the bottoms of these uh, culverts. And what we do is we put a geogrid, biaxial geogrid, uh, uh, it can be uh, PVA or it can be polypropylene material, and uh, we also put uh, attach this uh, to the uh, uh, metal culvert uh, through screws with spacers. These spacers are important because we are trying to make very thin, very thin layers, less than one inches over the corrugations because of environmental uh, concerns. Very thin uh, concrete layer uh, there at the bottom of these inverts. The, our first application was uh, last year in 2017. In the summer, uh, we uh, uh, fixed a six-foot section of a 70-foot-long culvert. As you see, this is the bottom of the culvert, the invert of the culvert. And if you look carefully, this culvert was uh, coated with asphalt, but it was still corroding because of abrasion, and corrosion was occurring. So we asked them to remove this asphalt coating so that it would bond better our material. Then they said they would rather uh, replace the culvert rather than uh, <laughs> take that coating off. It was not an easy job to take that coating off. Then we said, okay, let's do a small section, six foot section, and see how it will, uh, with this geo grid, how it will stay uh, in that culvert, at the bottom of the culvert. And as you see, there are also corrugations there that helps us to keep the material in there. So we again made the a high workable uh, ECC material, as you see here, uh, pretty uh, high, uh, it's a self-consolidating material, and we manually placed this material. But it was a wet mix, as you see, it's a self-consolidating mix, wet mix meaning that the high slump flow in this thing, rather than slump, a slump flow measurement, like uh, Dr. Meher was talking about. And what we noticed is that along the sides here, it was uh, sliding down. Okay, flowing down the sides, as you see here on this side. So what we did is waited about 15 minutes and then finished it up because it stiffened a little bit and it was able, we were able to push it back and complete the project. As you see, this is the completed section. And then we waited several months as the water flew over this thing and it was doing well, it was attached. Uh, therefore, we decided to do the rest of the uh, culvert. So the remaining, 64 feet is a pretty large uh, section. Uh, there uh, we paved it we, uh, by spraying. Uh, uh, this, there is a shotcrete nozzle here. So there is the line, pump line. So we sprayed it to the invert. As you see, very thin uh, layer. And we have the geogrid and the spacers so that we keep it below one inches over the corrugations. And this is the trailer pump that we used. Uh, the truck uh, uh, chute uh, places the concrete into this grate and they pump it. And here, it also was another wet mix, as you see here, wet mix. And in the wet mix, we again had sliding down on the sides, but when we waited and finished it, it was completed satisfactorily. So it uh, turned out to be a good uh, repair uh, project for us. Then, the, uh, in, these, uh, in the spring, uh, they told us that they would prefer, rather than a wet mix, a dry mix for spraying, so that it would stick better to the metal culvert. Then we did this uh, stiffer ECC mix, as you see, stiffer mix, and then we tried to put it through the grate. You see, the stiff mix didn't go through the grate easily. So then they brought in a vibrator. You see a, a, a vibrator here. Uh, with the help of the vibrator, the stiff mix was able to go through the grate easily. And then, as you see, they are spraying. And it sprayed well, it stuck well, 
and it didn't flow uh, on the side. So they uh, they were happier with the uh, stiffer ECC mix. And the completed uh, uh, culvert, as you see here, uh, looks very nice. And these culverts went through uh, very high uh, uh, flooding and very heavy rains, and they seem to be performing well. So in conclusion, we have been able to do ECC, engineering cementitious composite, with locally available materials, including mortar or concrete sand. And concrete sand is what they prefer at the plants. And ECC deflection hardens and exhibits tight cracks. And mortar mixer and ready mix concrete trucks, both can be used for mixing ECC. This depends on the amount of ECC you need. Small ones in mortar mixer, large quantities in the truck mixers. And ECC is self-consolidating and enables manual placement, uh, very easy. Uh, and in shear keys and closure pores, we have been using self-consolidating, but uh, they prefer the stiff ECC in the culvert repair spraying, so it is easily sprayed with the pump. And thank you very much, and I am uh, uh, ready for questions. Thank you. I don't see any questions <laughs> in the uh, chat pod, the Q&A uh, box. So one thing that we could do, I can unmute the attendees if they have questions. Also, if the panelists have any questions for the other presenters. Oh, cool. So we got one person. So let me uh, allow on hell to talk. Hel hello? Hello. This is Angel Mateos from the University of California Payment Research Center in UC Berkeley. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Okay, this is about the ECC. Um, my question is, have you ever tested the strength of the bond between ECC and Portland cement concrete? Oh, yes, when we did, and in fact, I have a paper uh, discusses that, a TRB paper when we did the shear keys. What we did was we did the slanted shear tests and we did that for UHPC, ECC, and also for the grout mixtures. But what happens is that when you have a bond, the, uh, the concrete, uh, the base concrete uh, uh, seems to be the uh, important factor uh, because that is usually lower uh, in uh, bond strength than these uh, uh, other concretes we are talking about, whether it's the ECC or the EUHPC or those kind of things. So you will find out that when we did those uh, tests, uh, we were getting very similar results because all of them had the same base concrete, uh, the A4 concrete that we had attached it. So ECC itself uh, does bond well, but again, uh, the bond will be dictated by the underlying existing concrete. And do you have an order of magnitude for the strength of that bond? Oh, it, it is in that paper. You will see that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And you can, you can also call me and write to me, send me an email, and I'll be happy to talk about those issues with you. Somehow. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Rima. We're particularly sure. interested in that topic, the bonding. Between oh, very interesting the... topic, very interesting. But as you see in the culverts, we are attaching with screws and, uh, and this uh, geograde that is attached to the culvert and seems to be staying in place. As I told you, we are watching how it's performing in the field. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, so yeah, again, if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand and I will, uh, I can unmute you. And also, again, if presenters have a question for other presenters, uh, you can also feel free to yeah, ask I have a question, question for uh, Dr. Castaneda Lopez. Uh, uh, my question is that how expensive these microcapsules are, and uh, you indicated that there was about 18% reduction in strength. Is that something that uh, 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 would cause us a problem, that 18%? Well, I think that uh, uh, in terms of the cost, uh, well, it, it depends on the chemical because, uh, again, the yes. process for the synthesis is uh, low cost. So in terms of cost effective, we can say that uh, we don't see that much of, a, of an impact from the current uh, processes. So that can be uh, addressed in, a, in an application. Now, in terms of uh, the physical strength, so I think that uh, uh, we... What we are doing again is a balance of uh, the, the physical strain versus the uh, versus the uh, microcapsule content. So we can also optimize the, yeah. the microcapsule uh, uh, 
uh, content to make yeah. it uh, uh, not uh, not uh, affect uh, to not affect the 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 performance of the concrete. So I think we are doing uh, our experimental metrics in a way that we are targeting both things at the same time. Yeah, yeah. You see, the DOTs are very conscious about strength issues. So I wanted to think about that. And um, uh, we are also very much interested in Virginia, for example, using corrosion resistant and uh, corrosion free reinforcement these days. So in other words, we do not trust, uh, or not, I shouldn't use the word trust, but we, uh, we think that reinforcement should also take the load. You know, it's not only the concrete protecting the reinforcement. The reinforcement should also be uh, corrosion resistant or corrosion free material. What you are saying is that the reinforcement in terms of the coating, like a, as a coating, or a uh, no, 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 no. We use stainless steel, for example. We have three uh, uh, three Resist groups, classes of reinforcement in decks, bridge decks, for example. And the uh, upper upper one, uh, class three, is stainless steel, like those three three o six, three sixteen, three sixteen, three o five, what three o four, stainless steel. I see. I, I think, uh, uh, well, now my question to you is that uh, if we can get in touch with you to uh, get more pra practical sense in terms of this application. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a, that's a very interesting topic. And also you should come to Transportation Research Board meetings in January. And a lot of these things will be discussed there as well in Washington, D.C. We, yeah, yeah, we will get in touch with you and also we will attend for sure. Definitely, definitely. And uh, I think Dr. Hassan, who is the director of transit, had wanted to also weigh in on that question. And Dr. Hassan, I think I promoted you to panelists so that you can also speak. Hey, Philippe, how are you? This is Marla. Very Marla good. Thank you. No, I know that. How are you doing? Good. Were you uh, able to... Yes. Go ahead. I just wanted to weigh on uh, and ask Matt's answer. So. Sure. The microcapsule that he has been using for corrosion in this particular presentation is the same calcium nitrate microcapsules that we've been using for poor saving. So yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. No, no, that's a very interesting study. But what I was trying to tell him is that uh, we always try to do things with concrete, but I am saying that we should also emphasize the importance of the reinforcement itself, and the reinforcement should take some of the load. Uh, it shouldn't be concrete protecting reinforcement all the time, you know? It's a, it's a, a, a composite material. Each member of the composite family should do something. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I just wanted to say that, that from a cost perspective, this is the most cost effective um, uh, micro encapsulation. And oh, wow. uh, without economies of scale, this only Very increases uh, the cost of the concrete by about five to seven percent. Also, uh, the strength issue is uh, the one that we've been discussing and the, the solution that we have right now is when we add the foamer. We get rid of the air bubbles that accumulate, and that, and with the former, you can get the same strength as regular concrete. Yeah, very nice. Because DOT's uh, strength is a big deal. In fact, uh, when we talk about bridge decks, and sometimes we get these high strengths, seven, eight thousand, they are smiling. Whereas I'm saying those high strength concrete is uh, uh, crack prone. Uh, you need to get closer to your uh, limits, you know, type of thing. But yeah. uh, uh, this is very important uh, strength issues for them I uh, rather than me. And thank you so much for your presentation. I enjoyed it very much. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity. I hope uh, this will uh, create new discussions among us, uh, like the, uh, uh, like we had with Dr. Castaneda. And I think we will uh, carry absolutely. it further. Yeah, we'll carry it. Absolutely. Further. And we'll all meet at TRB in January, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely we should. Very interesting topics. I enjoy them very much. And I'm also waiting for Dr. Meher uh, to come up with this recycled materials uh, used uh, to make these SCCs and other concretes, maybe even uh, ECCs with recycled material. Sure. Thanks, Chilik. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very Thank good uh, uh, presentations. And thanks for the opportunity. Of course. So I think we'll, we'll end here. Again, I want to thank uh, all three of our presenters, and I especially want to thank the UTC for Underground Transportation Infrastructure, who greatly helped in organizing uh, this webinar. Again, if you are re interested in our research, please visit both of our websites, or you can definitely reach out to us directly as well.
So again, thank you everyone for, for attending and have a great rest of the day.